So hey folks, uh, this is module 3.2 and in this module we are going to learn about comments, variables, data types and typecasting. Alright, and in our previous module that is 3.1, we learned about uh, C sharp. We learned the basic structure of C sharp or all the very basics of means what is that using a system, what is a like we learned a lot of things all right what is console dot right line right so in this module we are going to learn about uh, comments uh, then we are going to move on to variables then data types and last but not the least and one of the important concepts that is typecasting all right so without any further ado let's get started so what are comments all right see comments are basically uh, some sort of statement or you could say some sort of keywords or something like that all right it is some sort of specific lines that is ignored all right that is ignored by the compiler all right you already know what a, co a compiler is a compiler is uh, is a tool that uh, converts the code to a binary form right that that is or you can say machine understandable code right uh, big why it does that it does that because uh, machines cannot uh, understand English all right it can't understand our words machines can only understand binaries that is 0 and 1 all right so yeah uh, so what comments does is comments uh, the, the comments basically all right these comments are basically ignored by the compiler they they won't run that particular line all right they they will just ignore that that he, yeah it is a comment all right why should we run that it's a you uh, it's a useless thing all right for a compiler for a compiler it is a useless thing uh, they won't run it because uh, nothing will come out of that right so a comment is basically uh, a comment is basically a, a, some sort some sort of lines all right some sort of specific lines that are ignored by the compiler all right and uh, how comments are useful all right how comments are useful see comments are useful in a in a way all right it is uh, useful see uh, as a programmer all right we have to uh, make our code understandable all right uh, because let's say i'm working on some project right now all right i'm working on some project and in that project all right uh, the code is of 1000 lines or 2000 lines or let's say even uh, 100 200 lines all right now uh, the code is being passed to another developer he has to work on it all right without any proper documentation or comments all right or uh, we can't uh, the, the the coder all right the new developer can't understand what that program is doing all right he have to like put a lot of time to understand the whole code but we can make that thing easier right we can make that thing very simpler we can comment all right we can comment the lines we can comment the lines right we can means we can uh, sort of create small all right small documents or you could say small small lines or small paragraphs for, for that particular code like let's say uh, cu currently we are developing a uh, uh, ar app and in there we have to rotate all right we have to rotate that 3d model right we have to rotate that 3d model so i, I have written some code for that and in the top of that all right in the top of that code what I did, I wrote a comment, all right, I wrote a comment that this particular code, all right, this particular code is rotating the 3D game object, all right, it is, it is rotating the object, all right, so if I'm passing the code to another developer, then he won't uh, have any problem understanding the code, all right, he won't have any problem, so that's why comments are useful. All right, now let's, let's try this out and also uh, there are actually two types of comments. All right, single line comment and multi line comment. So, what is a single line? All right, single line comments works for only single lines. All right, like it can, if the line is one, then it will be be within line one only. All right, we will. Uh, if you are, are not understanding that, don't worry. You are going to do the practical. All right. So, single line comments are basically uh, they stay in one line only. All right. If you if you go to the next line, that comment won't work. All right, that comment won't extend actually but this is not the case of with multi-line comment all right multi-line comment can help us in documenting also so multi-line comments uh, starts from a particular point uh, let's say we are starting that multi-line comment from line number three all right and we are writing some multi-lines all right uh, we are writing some 
text within that comment all right in separate separate lines like you can see right in here all right right like you can see right in here we have taken three lines to write some content and in the in the fifth line all right we are ending it in the fifth line we are ending it so that's how we start a single uh, a multi line comment all right so to start a single line comment we have to give a uh, double forward slash all right and to uh, write a multi line comment all right there are two things a starting point and an ending point all right the starting point is like forward slash star it is the start of the comment and to end that comment what we have to do is star backward slash all right i hope you understand right so let's try this thing out right before going to variables let's try this thing out all right so uh, this is our code all right so uh, first of all let's write some sort of code all right let's write console dot write line uh, comments all right so this is our code right now let's try to run it let's run uh, run this program see it is printing comments all right let's let's uh, try to give the single line comment notation all right see uh, after i have given to forward slash you can see the whole line has gone brown what does this indicate this indicates that this is a commented line all right this is a commenting commented line although the color will uh, will be different in your editor if you are using some other kind of editor all right because this is the theme of it but don't worry about the color but it is highlighted all right when it is highlighted you are you will understand that your code is committed commented so let's run run it all right let's run it see it is not printing anything because it is not reading the line it uh, the compiler is just ignoring this particular line all right now uh, let's try out something uh, uh, another thing can we add another line of code in the same same single line comment can we so let's try it out why not try it out? try it out right let's try it out and see so uh, line 2 all right so let's try it out let's see that the, the single line comment is also ignoring the next one or not oh no it is not ignoring the next line Can, uh, do you know what what is the reason the reason it it works for only one line all right if we if we give another set of uh, forward slashes uh, in line 2 comment means in the console dot write line line two then again it would perform its function all right but it is also like it's it is the task is also tedious to uh, give every time uh, the double slashes right double forward slashes so there's another thing all right let's say we want to give uh, let's say we want to uh, write multi line comment all right we, or you could say we want to uh, write multi line things right so first of all let's give console dot write line comments all right console dot write line line 2 all right uh, line 2 again uh, console dot uh, write line line 3 all right so let's try it out all right let's try it out uh, let's run it see uh, the code is running but we don't want the code to run we want to comment it all right we want the compiler to ignore it so how would we do that all right so simply give forward slash and star all right see uh, as you can see here uh, uh, ju just as i have gave as soon as i uh, gave this comment uh, comment notation multi line comment uh, starting point all right you can see it has highlighted all right or made the colors brown from where it started all right uh, now we have to end it how would we do that so it's it's again as simple as that just star backward slash all right and you can see the uh, commented portion is only brown right let's run it see uh, uh, the compiler is ignoring the codes it is as simple as that 
so i hope you understood what are comments all right comments are basically uh, some set of lines all right that are ignored by the compiler that's it all right so now as we have understood about comments let's uh, let's go for variables all right see variables are uh, you can uh, see variables are used to store some value all right variables in a in a programming language are used to store some value right so to un uh, see i won't be using any technical terms to uh, make you understand about variables all right uh, i would be using layman's term all right or you can say the simple term to uh, make you understand about variables all right so first of all first of all think the variable as some sort of container all right a container that can store something all right let's say uh, uh, let's take a common container all right let's say uh, let's say a water bottle all right take a uh, take an water bottle all right take an water bottle it is a variable all right for now think your variable as a water bottle all right and you are storing all right something in it all right what thing what is that thing that you are storing in that water bottle it is all right it is a liquid all right in a water bottle you will store some some kind of liquid doesn't matter what kind of liquid it is all right uh, it can be a uh, a uh, orange juice or uh, chocolate milkshake or a simple water right all it is a liquid all right doesn't matter what what liquid it is but it is a liquid right in the water bottle you are storing some kind of liquid all right and what liquid are you storing all right what is the liquid means is it water is it an orange juice or is it a chocolate milkshake so i want to store a chocolate milkshake in the water bottle right or even a, a simple water i can store water in the water bottle so you can you can imagine all right you can you can uh, interpret this uh, in technical terms how see the water bottle is acting like a variable or you can say a container because variables are containers variables are meant to store some value right variables are meant to store some value all right so variables are container and in our example a variable is our water bottle all right water bottle is our variable all right and the uh, and we are storing a liquid right all right we are storing some sort of liquid in here the liquid is the type all right liquid is the type of the data we are storing all right see water comes in the type of liquid right we all know that chocolate milkshake also comes under the type liquid because it is liquid of course uh, then orange juice also comes under the type of liquid right so we are storing some kind of liquid so that is a type or you can also say data type right we can also say data type right it is the data type right so water bottle is our variable uh, liquid is our data type and and the type of liquid you are storing all right the type of liquid you are storing that is uh, water or let's say chocolate milkshake that is the data all right that is the data we are storing in our variable all right or you can say in our water bottle so we are taking our water bottle all right we are taking some sort of liquid all right Uh, some sort of liquid is the uh, chocolate milkshake i am storing my chocolate milkshake in the water bottle all right and the type of the chocolate milkshake is liquid all right so i hope you understand so variables are basically acts like as containers they are containers but in computer programming all right they are containers in computer programming right so let's uh, to make you un make make it more understandable let me show you all right see this won't execute of course this will give you error but let me tell you all right so this is the type all right liquid is the type water bottle water bottle all right water bottle is our uh, container all right water bottle is our container and the data we are storing in it all right the data we are storing in is is chocolate milkshake right 
so yeah here you can see this liquid is the data type all right this liquid is the type this water bottle is the container and this choco milkshake all right is our data this choco milkshake is our data all right and this is how all right this is how we initialize all right or create a variable in our c sharp programming all right this is how we create variable in many other programming languages too like java c++ so let's uh, write a comment for it all right that is data type data type then we have to uh, give the variable name right variable name then we have to initialize the data to it so this is how it works right or you can say if i remove this data only let's say type variable equals data as simple as that nothing to complicate it all right so we are storing chocolate milkshake in our water bottle all right and what type of uh, chocolate milkshake it is it is a liquid all right it is a liquid so that's it right this is what variable is variable is a container nothing else so i already show you how to like what is the way of declaring uh, a container right now let's try it out all right let's let's try uh, actually initializing a variable right Act let's try out initializing a variable in in computing terms all right not in layman's term so it's simple first we have to give the type or you can say data type then we have to write the name of the variable all right let's say i want to store a number all right then we have to uh, use the equals operator also known as assignment operator all right and we have to assign all right we have to put some sort of data in our case in this case the data will be number so i am trying going to put 12 in here all right and let's say it works or not so i am going to, what i am going to do is i am going to print it out right i am simply going to print this thing out let's see what happens yeah so it has printed our uh, number that we stored in a variable right so we created a variable that is storing the value right so that's great it's a good start actually so we learned what is a variable all right we learned what is a variable how to create a variable one more thing i would like to say is now you, you many of you might have uh, a question that we are creating a variable right like uh, where do we store our water bottle all right we can we store our water bottle in our backpack all right or in in some place at our house right that's right right so where do we store this variable all right where this variable gets stored see uh, in our systems we have random access memory all right that is ram all right and uh, this some sort of all right when we create a variable some sort of memory is allocated all right what memory like how much memory is allocated in the ram we will see in the later sections we'll learn about data type all right but it uh, it allocates all right or you can say makes some space for the variables to store in in the ram so our variables and values are stored in the ram all right so i hope you understand all right i hope you understand the concept of variable all right if you are uh, confused in some point you can comment it down all right so uh, now uh, it is uh, there's a dialogue that uh, with great power comes great responsibility right similarly with variables there also comes rules all right and we have to maintain those rules the very first rule all right the very first rule is that a variable name in shisha can only contain numbers uh, letters numbers or underscore all right what that means is all right we can't create a variable all right uh, let me let me show you actually int dollar num equals 12 right, right. let's uh, try to print it out and you will sh see what happens all right see it is giving us an error that is unexpected character because the reason is c sharp doesn't allows a variable to have dollar in, in in its variable naming all right these are called naming conventions 
but we can have underscores all right we uh, already have letters right we already have letter we can have underscore all right we can have underscore two all right so yeah of course we can also have numbers now here comes another rule regarding it all right here comes another rule regarding it all right so variable name all right variable name can't start with a number see here it is written that we cannot start a variable name with a number that is it uh, we cannot write a variable name as 3 abc or uh, 2 name like that all right let's try it out and see all right let's try it out and see if that works or not right so 2 num let's try it out see it is uh, giving us an error that is unexpected symbol but but we can have uh, numbers in between all right we can have numbers in between of variable names all right like n to um uh, i know it's it's weird but we can have like this we can have numbers like this all right similarly we can also add numbers to the end of the variable all right we can also put numbers to the end of the variable see it is working perfectly fine right so we learned about two rules that uh, we can uh, only add uh, letters numbers and under underscores during a na uh, naming convention all right during the naming of any variable and also a variable can't start with a number all right although it can have all right it can have number in between the name of the variable or at the end of the variable right uh, uh, so the next rule all right the next rule we have is that we cannot use a reserved keyword we cannot use a reserved keyword as a variable name because they already have their own meanings and purposes to fulfill right now what does this mean see there are multiple keywords all right or you can say reserved keywords in uh, in our csha program just like we saw previously like using all right using system they are reserved keywords all right using is a reserved keyword class is a reserved key keyword all right int all right int is a reserved keyword if is a reserved keyword all right console it is a re reserved keyword so we cannot use any sort of reserved keyword during a variable naming convention right so let's try it out all right let's uh, let's give it a variable name as if all right and just let's try it out what happens let's see what happens wow it has given some errors all right it is giving unexpected symbol equals then um, unexpected symbol if it would it will give because this is not the syntax of if right that's why it is giving the error uh, unexpected symbol equals all right so yeah so you uh, you learned that we cannot use any sort of uh, reserved keywords as variable names all right similarly uh, another thing is variable names are case sensitive all right what does this mean see uh, it means that if you write a variable like this all right mm, let's say uh, if you uh, write a variable like this name equals priyanshu all right see uh, this is a string data type all right i, I would uh, tell you what is this but don't worry for now i'm just showing an example and uh, let's try to print it out all right so let's try to print it out and let's see what happens right so you can see that it has printed my name right but let's say uh, if i write uh, the name in capital letters all in caps all right all in caps can you can you uh, can can you tell that will it uh, execute the program execute in the sense of course it will execute but will it give any sort of error or just print priyanshu as it is written right now all right so will it just take your time all right just take a few seconds and think about it all right think about it will it all right pause the video and think about it so let's let's run it now all right see it is giving us an error it is giving us 
us an error why because there is no variable defined as name that is capital letters name there's a variable defined as name as small letters all right this variable is in small letters and we wrote it in capital letters so both of them are totally different all right both of them are totally different so uh, always remember that the variable names that is a uh, the type or you could say not exactly the type uh, just check that if the variable name is in caps or uh, in small letters all right because these are uh, case sensitives all right these variables are case sensitives all right so we can't have like if we write a name in small letters and we are trying to print that name in capital letters means uh, in capital letters is uh, means that we are uh, trying to write that name variable in the console dot write line in capital letters it won't execute because it would uh, then it would search for another set of variable all right it, it would search for another variable whose whose uh, text is in uh, capital letter and is written name all right so i hope you understand that we can't have uh, like variables means we can have variables but uh, they are case sensitive all right like uh, because the f see in this example this first name all right this first name you can see that the first is written in uh, small letters the n is written in cap capital letters and ame is written in small letters but in in another is in another uh, text it is uh, the f is caps but, uh, but the other letters are in uh, small letter all right are in small so this this name and this name are not same all right both are totally different all right now as we have learned about variable its rules all right now it's our time to get into the data types all right see it is a very important concept all right data types is a very important concept so uh try to understand it all right if you are not able to understand something all right you can comment it down and also i would suggest rewatching this particular portion all right rewatching the particular portion you uh, have not understood then also you have you haven't understood you can comment it down and i would uh, surely uh, like to help you all right so yeah data types right see uh i already told you about an example right previously the water bottle example that the li liquid is the data type or you can say the type of uh, the value right similarly data types are also the same thing they they specify the type of a variable or right? they specify the type of the variable all right the type of value it can store right so the very first data type we have is int all right so basically the int int is basically a short for integer all right uh, and it has a range all right it has a range of minus 2147483648 2147483647 all right what this means that it has a range of this to this all right it has a range of this to this if we exceed that value all right let's say if i write 2147483647 then it would return a error all right let's try it out all right let's copy this value first all right um let's copy this value first and uh, let's try it out in our code editor all right so um yeah int val equals all right so um now let's try to print it out console dot uh, right line val all right let's run run the program and see it is printing right it is printing the exact value but but for now let's change it to 2147483648 can you tell me will it print or will it uh, like give us some error pause the video and think about it all right think about it and just uh tell me that will it print the value 
all right just pause the video and think about it so let's run the program and let's see my god it is giving us some sort of error why it is giving that error because the range is exceeded all right means we have exceeded the range of integer like here you have seen that the max uh, means the negative range is 21474836484 right and the positive range is up to 21474836487 but in there we wrote 21474836484 so it is having a plus 1 value all right it is exceeding the range that's why it is giving error so ranges basically tells us that how much value all right how much value the a particular data type can store all right and we also learned how to uh, use integer as that is int as a variable right so another is long all right it is a, you can say it is a big brother of int all right uh, it also store integer value all right that is uh, means non decimal value you could say or you can also say integer value all right so it, it has a more higher range all right this long all right this long has a more higher range than int all right so when you need more values to store all right when you need more values to store that is higher range of values to store then you should go for long all right like let's try out the same example right we like here we see that we put some uh, using int it exceeded it uh, its range right because the range was up to 21474836488 right but let's try the same thing out with long will it exceed let's see no it won't it won't exceed do you, do you know the reason the basic reason behind it is because the range of long is much much bigger than of uh integer all right it is really uh, the range is very much bigger than integer right uh, another thing all right as you can see in air basically uh, we can also add a suffix all right we can also add a suffix l all right we can also add a suffix l in here and it is not mandatory all right it is not mandatory but it is uh, recommended to add the suffix l all right it is recommended to add the suffix l all right so uh, yeah now as we have understood about uh, long all right as we have understood about long it is now a time all right it is now time to understand about byte so we are going to learn about uh, byte right so another thing uh, before going into byte all right another thing i would like to suggest is whenever you are writing all right means this suffix l all right in the long whenever you are writing this uh, always remember that, that to use capital all right capital l there is a very uh, specific reason for that because many people what many people does is they uh, gets confused with a uh, small letter l and one uh, it's sometimes uh, confusing and even c sharp uh, rec recommends to use a uh, capital letter l all right to use capital letter l in spite of small letter l all, all right although it will give a warning if you if you use small letter l but uh, there won't be much uh, issues with that but it is recommended to use capital letter l in spite of small letter l in the suffix of long all right long data type so uh, let's get into the byte all right byte data type c byte is also uh, so, uh, sort of integer only all right it also stores uh, integers but the byte all right bytes range is really low all right byte has a really low range all right byte has a really low range so uh, the range of it is from 0 to 255 all right it is uh, it is the range of byte so if we try it out all right if we try this example out all right if we try this example out uh, so basically if we try this example out that is byte 
all right <clears throat> byte val all right now if we give value uh, exceeding all right if we give value exceeding 255 that is let's say 300 all right and then try to print console dot uh, write line all right val so let's see what it does all right let's see what it basically does let's see all right so it is giving us some sort of error why it is giving error all right why it is giving error it is giving us error because we exceeded the limit all right now if we give something under the limit all right that is uh, between the uh, 0 to 255 all right let's say we give 255 only all right if we give this see it is working perfectly fine so yeah that's what byte is it has a low range but it is an integer data type all right similarly we also have other data types all right now we are going getting into the floating point data types or you can say decimal data types all right that uh, these are the data types that has decimal decimal places all right these data types has decimal places so the very first uh, data type we we will be learning in uh, in decimal places uh, all right uh, that is floating point numbers or you can say float all right so float is a data type all right which can have decimal uh, means which have decimal places in numbers all right if you want to store the uh, some value in points we can't store that in integer of course right so we have to use some sort of data type meant for it so similarly there are three data types all right meant for uh, storing uh, decimal placed uh, values that is float double and decimal all right so the first, very first thing we are learning is float all right so floating point uh, basically float refers all right to floating point numbers all right and they have decimal places in the numbers all right J just like 1.34 then 5.64 all right these numbers have decimal decimal places in them and uh, if we talk about the range all right the the float has a range of plus minus 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 45 all right to uh plus minus 3.4 into 10 to the power 38 all right so this is the range of float all right and also float uh, uh uses eight bytes of storage all right and it has a precision of about seven digits all right so basically um <clears throat> it has a precision of seven digits all right what that means is it means that if you are storing a number like 1.2345678 all right if you are storing a numbers like this so it will be rounded off all right it would be rounded off to 1.2345678 all right so it would be rounded off to this all right so let's uh, learn how to initialize this uh, float variable right let's learn to do so so float all right float uh, value equals all right float value equals let's give some sort of uh, decimal value that is 12.5 and also add a suffix f all right then what the suffix uh, f does is it tells that it is a floating point value now by default all right by default the val the decimal values all right the decimal values are in double all right are in the format of double so it is always recommended to give f in the uh, back of float uh, float numbers all right floating point numbers so val let's try and print it out all right see it is printing 12.5 now let's try it try it out without the f suffix all right let's see what happens it is giving us error the uh, the reason is because the the b means 
these decimal values all right by default all right these decimal values by default are in uh, double all right are in the type of double so it is always recommended to uh, you uh, add f suffix at the last of float variables right so that's what it is all right so as simple as that so yeah let's uh, let's see all right let's see other data types too that is double all right let's see double so as we have learned about float all right it is uh, a really great data type to be used all right another is uh, double all right uh, it has a higher range all right this uh, double has a higher range uh, and uh, a good precision all right a good precision so double all right what is a double all right see double is also a data type and uh, it is a 64 bit all right it is a 64 bit double precision floating point type all right and uh, it has a precision of 14 to 15 digit all right it, it has a good precision of around 14 to 15 digit and uh, also all right also to initialize a double variable we have to use the suffix small d or capital D all right similarly in float also we can use capital F but I use small f all right okay uh, so here in the example i guess uh, i did a mistake uh, i would fix this issue all right here you can see in the example i gave <laughs> float num equals 12 f but don't worry in the in the final note that would be uh, that you would be getting all right i would be i would be fixing this issue all right but for now uh, i will show you the actual example all right i will show you the actual example i'm really sorry about this mistake but uh, in the actual uh, note this issue will be fixed all right uh, so the range all right so double has a range of uh, plus mi uh, plus minus 5.0 into 10 to the power minus 324 to plus minus 1.7 into 10 to the power 308 all right so let's try it out let's try this double all right let's try this double out so in Mm, let's get to the uh, editor of course all right and let's write double all right <clears throat> num equals 12.5 all right d okay and then console dot log oh sorry not console dot log i'm always writing this thing because in a unity it is uh, to write any sort of comment we do debug.log so it's like uh, it it is habituated to me <laughs> so um, yeah so let's try and print it out all right let's see if it gives any sort of errors or runs seamlessly so we can see that it has rams ran seamlessly all right so we have learned about double data type all right we have learned about float we have learned about int we have learned about long we have learned about byte we have learned about float we have learned about double now it's our time all right it is now it is our time to understand this decimal all right let's understand this decimal data type all right see decimal is another floating point data type all right where you can uh, store decimal values all right even the name suggests it so but all right but this date this decimal all right this decimal uh, has much greater precision all right than any other all right that is a float or double all right the precision of uh, float and double is lower than decimal all right so the decimal has better precision all right it has a greater precision that is of approximately 28 to 29 digits all right approximately 28 to 29 digits so this double uh, this decimal data type all right has an uh, greater precision of approximately 28 to 29 digits all right and it is recommended all right it is always recommended to use the uh, decimal data type all right in spite of double or um, float if you want a 
greater precision all right if you want a greater precision then you should use decimal all right but the range but the range of decimal data type is uh, lower than that of double and float all right so it has basically a range of uh, <clears throat> plus plus minus 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 28 to uh, plus minus 7.9228 into 10 to the power 28 so this is the range all right this is the range of decimal data type all right similarly let's um, try it out all right let's try it out in our code editor all right so uh, it's very simple i already included uh, the definition right and also the example all right nothing too uh, too complicated in here so decimal decimal num equals 25.5 d sorry the suffix will be m not d i'm really sorry about that so the suffix will be m all right so the suffix for decimal is m so this is how we write a uh, initialize a decimal data type all right this is how we do it so now as we have learned about uh, decimal data type now it's our time to learn about three other data types all right that is char bool and string these are very important data types all right all of the data types that i'm teaching you all right all of them are very important for you to understand all right so char all right char data type what does char all right what is char actually char is a char basically stands for character all right or you can say letter all right a particular letter all right so like like uh, like a is a particular letter or a character like b like c like d all right so these are characters all right these are characters similarly if you say have to all right if we want to define any sort of character in a in a our program how would we do that all right how would we do that it's pretty simple all right it's pretty simple just to write care all right uh, also i'm not changing the variable name i'm going to keep it num only all right or let's say change it let's change it all right and let's say i want to store a character all right called a all right and if i put ch all right uh, now i want to print it all right so let's see it gets print or printed or not so here it is being printed one more thing or right. there are some details that you should look out for first of all all right if you are uh, a character all right a character data type can only store only one letter all right it can't store a b all right a b c it can only store one letter all right uh, another thing you have to uh, put in your mind is that whenever we write a character we have to enclose that particular uh, letter in single brackets like just like we did in here all right so similarly let's try another out that is b all right and uh, let's run this program all right see it is printing b all right now what if all right if we what if we try to add multiple all right add multiple uh, letters in it so here you can see it is giving us error because of course this is a single this can only store a single character it can only store as uh, uh, like only one only one character all right so that's we are giving it to it that is only one character so remember uh, if you if you want to store only a single character then always go for char all right now our next all right uh, let's see what is our next yeah our next topic is bool all right see bool uh, is stands for boolean all right it is the short for boolean so bool data types uh, can only contain true or false all right true means on all right true means it is executable all right true means uh, it will work it true means on and uh, false means off all right you can say it is off 
right right so if if we take an example of a circuit all right or you can say your lights also all right your lights also so you have a switch in your house all right to turn on the light so when you turn on the light all right the value of that particular switch is be becoming true all right or you can say the value of that particular switch is becoming on and because the the value is true all right because the value is true the current is flowing all right the current is flowing through the circuit and uh, lighting and uh, putting the lights on all right and and it is putting the putting the lights on similarly if you turn off the switch all right similarly if you turn off the switch then the value of the switch will be false and no current will pass through it all right it will just terminate so that's what true and false is in terms of programming similarly how would how can we uh, basically um, how can we basically initialize it i have also given you example also all right and i will also show you how to do that all right so bool is uh, running so am i running no i am sitting right i'm 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 sitting right so if i print it now all right if i print it now let's see what happens see it is uh, printing us true that the value is true right that the value is true now if i if i turn it false that is yeah i am running then let's say what happened it is printing false see we uh, we will understand the use of true and false all right this true and false in further lectures all right because we will be using this often uh, especially in the if else all right uh, in the if else and the development so you at that time you will understand the use case of bool and how important is it all right now similarly we have another all right string now previously uh, you, you might think that it is also similar to char and it is somewhat true all right see a string all right a string is basically collection of characters all right the thing that we can't do in char data type we can do that in string data type all right string is a collection you can say it is a collection of characters all right every letter in here is a character p is a character r is a character all right and we are able to contain it all right you can say uh, we are able to unite them in a single variable all right that we can't do in character because it can only store a single letter right so that's what a string is string can store multiple characters in a single variable all right because it is a collection of characters all right let's try out string name equals you can uh, write your own name all right my name is priyanshu all right so oh, oh also i forgot to give the semicolon this happens a lot uh, and then name let's try it out and see what happens see it is printing priyanshu it is not giving us any sort of error just like the char date when we try to store abc right so string can store multiple characters because it is it can store a collection of characters all right so another thing all right that is noticeable in here is uh, whenever you are writing a string all right whenever you are using a string you cannot use uh, single quotes all right you you should only use double quotes all right so whenever initializing a string remember to uh, enclose the uh, characters or you can say the let uh, means the word all right the word that you are uh, assigning in the string string type variable all right remember to enclose them in double quotes all right just like we did in here all right so yeah now it is our time all right it is our very time to understand or you can say learn all right it is our very time to learn are uh, about strings in depth all right because strings is one of the most important concepts all right in in programming 
so let's understand it all right the very first thing we are going to uh, learn is concatenation all right what is concatenation all right see concatenation is uh, nothing too much uh, of a complicated thing all right it is a really simple thing all right see concatenation uh, is basically the joining all right uh, it is basically the joining of two strings all right Conc concatenation means it is the joining of two particular strings all right that is what concatenation is so let's try it out practically right let's try it out in our code editor all right so see here we have the name right i'm not going to edit anything in it just i'm going to add some another instructions to it all right so add a plus in it all right add a plus and all right and then add the title all right that is bhattacharji all right this is my title right also i would like to give a space uh, before bhattacharji because then it would add some space to it then let's let's try to print it all right see we i am able to print my full name and we have successfully concatenated all right see uh, you might think that hey man this add is used for adding two numbers right we can use this add to add two numbers right we can use this add to add two numbers this addition operator but if we talk about in terms of strings all right if you talk about in terms of strings then this uh, add operator becomes a concatenation operator all right means it is used to uh, concatenate two strings into one all right uh, this is what this addition uh, operator does in terms of strings all right as simple as that all right so yeah now as we have understood about concatenation concatenation is nothing but but the joining all right the joining of two different strings all right now here comes some uh, very important uh, string methods all right it is uh, it is very important to understand all right so let's see see uh, this uh, length method all right it basically tells us what is the length of the string all right it basically tells us what is the length of the string let's try it out all right let's simply try it out let's uh, see we are going to uh, do it with a very simple string all right that a string that doesn't has a lot of characters all right so let's take abc all right see this, uh, this uh, we all know that uh, this this particular string has three characters right this particular string has three characters so let's try to print the length of it and let's see what happens wow it has given three now let's add another all right let's add another character in it and let's see what it ha what it does so as you can see it in here that it has printed four so our length means the string's length is four of course so that's what the length does all right and this is going to be really helpful in our further sections all right even in the development so always remember to go through these notes all right after watching a particular lecture all right so always go through these notes to clear your concepts again all right or you can say revision of your concept now here's another function all right that is equals all right what this equals does see uh, this equals will just compare one string to another all right it would just compare one string to another nothing uh, too much in here all right it would just compare one string to another all right so let's try it out in here right uh, i give it uh, let's uh, write another string all right string name uh, 2 all right equals uh, let's say d c b a right and let's try to use this function all right how to use this function first of all select all right 
select a variable all right that you want uh, to compare to all right so i'm going to select name as my parent variable all right i want to compare name to with name with name all right so then you have to give name dot equals all right and then within the parenthesis all right within the parenthesis of equals we have to pass the second variable that is name two all right and then simply print it out as simple as that all right guys uh sorry i had to change the ide all right the code editor i was using that is gdb compiler uh it had some server issues all right so now i'm using jdoodle all right and let's try to run this program again but in jdoodle all right and let's see uh what will be the output so here you can see false why is it false because of course of course dcba is not equals to abcd both are different all right now if we, if we try to give abcd again all right let's say what will be its output see it is giving true why why is it giving true it is giving us true because abcd is equals to abcd both are same right so yeah of course now all right we are going to see two more methods or you can say two more functions of strings that is index of and element at but before that all right we have to be aware of the concept of indexing all right where uh, where this uh, concept comes in picture what is this uh, what is that all right so yeah see indexing is basically tells the placement all right it basically tells the placement or you can say where the particular character is present in the string all right like it is it works sort of look uh, sort of like a location uh, in in the particular string all right now in programming all right in programming indexing always starts from zero all right so remember the first character all right the very first character of the string all right the very first character of the string will always be zero all right will always be zero now if we take uh, take an example of abc all right and we want all right we want the index of let's say b all right we want the index of b so basically the index of b would be one how i i already told you that the starting point all right it is the indexing always starts from zeroth position all right the indexing always starts from zeroth position so a would be zero b would be one and c would be two so the b's uh, b's address is one the uh, a's address is zero and c's address is two that's what indexing is it tells us the index or you can say the location now there are two uh two certain functions all right there are two certain functions available all right there are two certain functions available for uh, getting the index and uh getting the index and the element present at the index all right see the in what index of is does all right in the index of function we have to just um, pass all right we have to pass a particular um, uh, means a particular character present in the string all right and it would re return or you could say it would give us the index all right the index position of the particular character all right let's let's try it out all right let's try it out it would be as simple as that nothing nothing too much complicated in here all right so now if i if i had to remove this weight yeah <clears throat> so what we have to do is we have to just write index all right index of and then uh, let's say i want the index all right i want the index of c how would i do that all right before this pause the video and try uh, okay it's giving us error oh i understood why it is giving error actually i use single quote uh, single quotes i'm really sorry about that although uh, the quiz is still on so you have to guess all right you have to guess 
or not even guess try to uh, try to calculate all right try to interpret by yourself that what will be the output of this all right because we are trying to get the index all right we are trying to get the index of c all right index value of c from that string that is containing a b c d all right now let's execute it all right so it is again giving me errors i'm not sure why wait a definition for index of no instruction type code string all right wait oh sorry yeah as i told uh case sensitivity i uh i actually used a uh, small letter i that's uh, that's why i was like confused why it is giving error it would uh, the cap uh, the, the first letter will be in caps all right so the index all right so the index of c is 2 how if we talk about a the index of a is 0 because it is the starting point so of course it would be 0 then index of b is 1 uh, all right index of b is 1 and the index of c is 2 all right similarly after this all right similarly after this there is another All right, that is element of. All right, let's see. Let's see. Sorry, element at. I'm really sorry about that. So uh, it, uh, it got a rhyming. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So the uh, this is the element at function. What it basically does is see we have to pass. All right, we have to pass some sort of index value. All right, we have to pass an index value in it, and and after we pass the index value, let's say I pass. Uh, from the a, uh, from a b c d i pass 2 all right then it would return c because the at index 2 uh, c is present right let's try it out all right let's try it out and you, you will uh, you will also notice something all right now i will tell you what element at all right and we have to put the index value that is let's say i want the value present at index 3 all right let's see see it is giving it is giving some sort of error what error why is it giving that error see the reason that is giving the error because basically in in the system in the system name space there is no dot element at function available right now to uh, use this function we have to uh, include another namespace that is using system dot link all right and then if we run it all right and then if we run it see we got the element present at index 3 that is d all right now if i if i want element present at let's say 1 can you guess what we, uh, in the index 1 which element is present pause the video and think all right pause the video and think and uh, tell in the comments all right let's try it out let's see wow it is correct at at index 1 element b is present that is uh, at at 0 all right at index 0 a is present at index 1 b is present right so it is as simple as that all right now Uh, I already told you about syst uh, link, all right. So we used a system dot link, all right. It is it is another namespace, all right. Link is basically a part of system namespace only, all right. And it contains the element at method. Nothing too complicated, all right. So till now we have learned a lot, all right. We have learned a lot about data types. We have learned a lot about comments. We have learned a lot about variables. right and the lecture has almost crossed one hour point all right so now this is our last all right this is our last topic of today all right last but not the least because there are many other topics available that is operators loops conditionals and etc so now this concept all right now i also have a homework for you that you guys have to do all right i won't show you how to do it all right i won't show you how to do it but you have to do it by yourself all right because after this type casting uh, i'm pretty sure that you would be able to solve some like a problem uh, only one problem means i would only give you one problem and i am think you will be i think you will be able to solve it all right so 
see sometimes all right sometimes it is really necessary for us all right to change the value all right before assigning means to change not the value but uh, the type of the value before assigning all right uh, let's say if we if we want to assign all right if we want to assign a floating point value to a integer of course of course it will give us an error right of course it will give us an error because of course we can't store a floating point value all right we can't store a floating point value in all right we can't store a floating point value in our integer right in our integer right so we uh, we have to convert it all right we have to cast it we have to convert that uh, type that typed value right that float typed value so let's try it out all right so type casting is basically changing the type of the value before assigning as simple as that all right so let's take uh, another thing that is int val all right int val equals 23.2 all right if uh, uh, of course we have to uh, add if suffix if we are going to add floating float uh, float type value all right and let's try to print it out all right let's see it uh, it works or not so val all right let's see it works or not oh my god it has it has given us some some error right constant value cannot be converted to a int right because of course it can't be converted because because uh, a compiler cannot convert it by itself we have to give some sort of instruction to convert it right so how would we do that as simple as that we have to convert it to int right so before uh, assigning the value all right like you have assigned this value before that give a parenthesis all right, all right and give the data type you want to convert the value to so it uh, currently it, uh, this value is in float all right this value is in float we want to convert it to int to store in the in data int variable right see it has stored basically what is happening is it is removing that uh, value from the point all right from the decimal it is removing that value all right and it is storing the exact value all right so this is what type casting is now all right now another thing i would like to show you is uh, we can also do this with the variable also all right let's let's um, create um, a variable all right that is float fl i have given any name i i could have imagined it all right so let's give a 23 point or let's say 24.5 f all right so let's give that all right and what i will do is i will remove that value and instead of that value i'm going to put the variable all right i'm going to put the variable and uh, let's let's remove this int also first try without converting and then let's see what will be the output all right i'm trying to assign a float value in the integer see it is giving all right cannot implicitly convert type float to int all right an exp an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast see the compiler is so kind that it is also telling us what what can help us fixing it all right so what thing can help us fixing it right so let's do it so open the brackets all right o open the brackets and we are going to type cast it that is int all right we are going to type cast it to int all right and let's say it works or not let's see wow congratulations it has worked it has worked right we we have successfully make uh, the floating point worked right we are, we have successfully type cast it now now here's a task for you all right here's a task for you you have to convert an integer to float all right you have to convert an integer to float this is your task all right after after watching the video you can uh, you can surely complete it all right it is as simple as that it is not that complicated task right so for today all right for for today's lecture for uh, module 3.2 we have com successfully completed this lecture all right and in the next lecture we are going to learn about operators all right uh, it is really important to learn about the operators so next lecture is on operators